Let's look at how wind loading in the transverse direction would be resisted by a metal building. Wind in the transverse direction will cause pressure on the windward sidewall and suction on the other three walls. The suction on the end walls is not shown because that will not affect the primary framing in the transverse direction. A low slope roof will see pressure on the windward side of the ridge and suction on the opposite or leeward side. The wind pressure is transmitted from the wall and roof cladding to the girts and purlins respectively. The wind load is then carried by the girts and purlins to the end wall and interior primary rigid framing. Let's first take a look at a primary rigid frame. The deflected shape of the frame is shown to help visualize the behavior of the rigid frame. Positive and negative moments are created throughout the frame and are depicted on the diagram. As with other loading on the primary rigid frames, the frame is optimized to address where material is needed to resist the imposed forces and moments. The loads are transmitted through the primary rigid frames, and the reactions at the column bases are used to design the anchor rods and foundation. Now let's look at the end bay. The end bay is post and beam construction, so moments are not transmitted like the interior rigid frames. Therefore, the end wall acts as a diaphragm to transmit the transverse lateral loads. Have you ever put together a bookcase kit? It's pretty unstable until you attach the back panel. That back panel is acting as a diaphragm, just as the end wall cladding does. 